is when we spend, we should not be giving that which we would not like to receive. What this means is when you're giving people charity, don't give them such food or such clothing or such items that you yourself would not take. This is a strict instruction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you want your charity to be accepted, you must give that which you would use yourself or you would consume yourself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَيَمَّمُوا الْخَبِيثَ مِنْهُ تُنْفِقُونَ وَلَسْتُمْ بِآخِذِيهِ don't give the evil or the bad that which you're spending, but you would never take from it. Remember this. It's a very interesting teaching of Allah. Sometimes people say, well, look, I have leftover food. What should I do with it? Well, if it's clean enough for someone to eat in a very respectful way, you may pack it and give it to them. Those whom you know would appreciate it. But you cannot throw remainders and, you know, that which is left over at people and without any respect whatsoever, treat them like animals simply because they have a need. You'd rather give that to the birds or give it to animals. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Or you may want to respectfully word it to a poor person to tell them, look, I have a little bit of leftover. Perhaps if you would like it, or maybe you could give it to someone else. Word it that way. Or word it in a respectful way. But remember, if we treat others disrespectfully and keep giving them a charity that is not of a standard acceptable by Allah, then we're asking for disaster. We are treating people unfairly, and that has an effect. The effect, they will not respect us. They will talk behind our backs bad about us. They won't have the true love for us. And this is why you can give leftovers, but once in a while, make them proper food. And like I said, with the conditions, once in a while, give away good things, give away that which you like and you love. Subhanallah, you really want to give a charity, give something that is honorable. Remember the charity, a point that we forget. It is for Allah. It's just that Allah's put a poor person to collect it on his behalf. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Think about it. So when I have a charity in my hands, I need to tell myself I'm giving this for the sake of Allah. This is Allah that I'm reaching out to because he wants me to reach out to him by giving food to a poor person. That's what it is. When you think that way, you will automatically be respectful in the way you treat others. Don't throw money at someone. Give it to them. Don't throw a coin at a beggar. Give it to them, the beggar respectfully. And pray for the beggar and pray that the Almighty accept it from you. Allah says the real beggars are those. And this is now the etiquette of those who are poor. There are from amongst us many who are suffering, many who are struggling. They are in crisis. And Allah says, the true beggars or the true poor people are those whom others think that they're not even poor. Why? Because they have self-respect. That's why if you can search for those in need and spend on them, spend on those who don't beg, whom you know this person is in need, but their honor, their dignity, their level, their respect, their self-respect does not allow them to come and ask me. Let me give them without them asking and I will make them feel so good about it. You know, so you give someone a gift and it happened so respectfully. You expect nothing in return. Why is it that in the modern world, many people spend, yes, but they expect in return from the people or from the person. They want something back. At times, something immoral. They want it back. Where are those who fear Allah enough to give others and still consider themselves fortunate for having been chosen to give? So give in a good cause. Search for those who are in need. For indeed, by reaching out to them, you will achieve a lot of goodness. They will pray for you from the bottom of their hearts. They will ask the Almighty to bless you further. They pray for you without you knowing simply because you reached out to them at a time of their need. So they thanked Allah by praying for you too. Wow, look at how we would achieve comfort without even knowing that there was a crisis 
heading for us and Allah diverted it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. When we deceive people and we steal their wealth, Allah tells us, don't consume usury and interest. Don't consume it. And Allah says, it is Allah who causes charities to multiply and interest to die. So if you're consuming interest, it's going to die. Do you know why? Because you've given money to a poor person and you're asking them for more when you were the wealthy one. So all you did is made the poor person a slave of yours by asking them to give you back more. So Allah says, do you know what? Yours will also deplete. If you really want it, give them. Tell them to give you back exactly what you gave them or give it to them and tell them not to give it back to you because it's a charity. But if you gave them and told them to give you back more, Allah says, we're going to cause your wealth to deplete at some point. May Allah protect us. But that's a verse of the Quran. Allah says, you've announced war with us. How then would you expect comfort in times of crisis? In fact, you're asking for a crisis while you're comfortable. And that's something that we need to protect ourselves from. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who believe, those who do good deeds, those who establish their prayer, those who give charities to the poor, their reward is with their Lord. It will never be wasted. They don't need to fear. They don't need to fear and they will never be sad. That's what Allah is saying. Why? Because they believed. They did good deeds together with that belief. This is where many are lacking. We believe, but we don't do good deeds. So Allah says they believed, they did good deeds, they prayed, they gave charities to the poor. For them, they will get their reward. May Allah reward all of us. May we be from among those who have no fear and no need to be sad, neither in this world nor in the next. Whatever the Almighty does, He always does it for us. We know it's the better for us. It's always the best, actually. So Allah says, وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ Verse number 281 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Be, be conscious of the day that you're going to return to Allah. Be conscious of the day that you're going to return to Allah at all times. Whatever you do, remember, you're going to go back to Allah. Remember, you came from somewhere, He's going to call you back. Remember, He released you into the earth and He's going to call you back. Always think of that. Why are you here? To do good. Do as much good as you can. Worship Allah alone and you're set. You will never have a day when you're forsaken by Allah. So even during your tough days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La yukallifullahu nafsan illa usaha. We will never test a soul with more than it can shoulder. We will never burden a soul with more than it can handle. That's what Allah says. And this also is in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling this to us, verse number 286 of the Surah. In fact, it's the last verse of the Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah is saying, you know what? Anything that comes in your direction, we know you can manage. We know you can cope. We know you can cope. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Keep going. We know that you can keep going. And when you go, you know, it reminds me of something unique. A person is digging for diamonds or gold or platinum or something, and they're digging. And this is, say, 100 meters away. So they've dug for the first whole week. And they've dug for the second whole week and they got nothing. And they're now 90 meters away. And they've dug for the third whole week and they're 99 meters away. One meter left, they gave up. Allah says, but you know what? We told you not to give up. If you had gone one more meter, you were going to strike gold. You were going to actually receive and achieve. So the same applies in all our crises. Keep going, subhanAllah. Now, let's not misinterpret this to say, well, if I'm in an abusive marriage, I need to keep going even though I'm beaten up and even though I'm... Be no, 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 no. Remember... There are certain things that Allah has blessed you with. If you're in an abusive marriage, you need to ask yourself, how bad is it? 
If it is really bad, do something about it. If someone is beating you up, you have to do something about it. You can end that marriage. You may. If the situation is improving, then you can have patience. If there is no improvement and it's deteriorating, then you don't need to have that patience or it's not a sign of patience to allow your body to be harmed, your mind to be harmed, your sanity and your mental health to be harmed. It's not a sign of patience that is actually being foolish. So let's interpret it in the correct way. When Allah has chosen a circumstance for you and you know that I have no option but to keep going, keep going. Don't give up on life. Don't kill yourself. Don't ever contemplate suicide. Because that's the worst thing you could ever think of. Allah is merciful. Don't kill yourself. Don't ever allow yourself to think about ending your life. It's never as bad as that. Remember this. May Allah protect all of us. May Allah grant us goodness and ease. My brothers and sisters, yes, we go through many challenges. And this is why right at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, the beautiful prayer that is there. Oh, our Lord, Rabbana. Oh, our Lord, do not hold against us our mistakes and that which was forgetfulness. Oh, Allah, do not test us the way you have burdened those before us. And oh, Allah, don't burden us with that which we have no power to actually uh, see through. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us to pray to him. What is name productions? <laughs>